Today we're taking apart the GTX 1660 Ti. And this is the EVGA XE model. So it's, it's small in one dimension and it's pretty fat in the other. And we're gonna be taking this one apart. We also got the Gigabyte model in this morning. So this needs to go through standard testing still, but we might look at it after. But there is a reference board design as usual for the 1600 series. The, the reference TDP as well is 10 watts less than what EVGA is running. It's 120 watts versus 130. So this is basically 108, 109% offset, power offset out of the box. So we're gonna take it apart, look at the cooler quality, the attachment of the cooler to all the components and then the components themselves. Before that, this video is brought to you by iFixit and their I'm a Genius campaign, which ribs Apple's Genius Bar and sets out to defend the consumer's right to repair their own products as right to repair laws have entered the spotlight. iFixit wants you to share a short video with them about a time you repaired a product instead of buying a new one with the hashtag I'm a Genius you can submit your stories at the link below and enter for a chance to win a $100 gift card for iFixit store. We already shared our repair story on the GN Twitter. Click the links below for more information. So here's the EVGA 1660 Ti, I keep blanking on the name, uh, XC. And it's a single fan. It's a fat card though. It is about three slots. It's like 2.8 or something. So it's a three slot card. And uh, I mean, I guess that's really all there is to it. We know it's 130 watts. We know it runs at 130 watts, like all the time. And there's no overclocking uh, power offset beyond that because it's already baked in. So what we're gonna do is take it apart. And we're using the uh, iFixit Protect toolkit. That was probably the ad for this video as well. And this, I'll start here. This sticker, EVGA stickers, don't say anything about the warranty. And that's because, and I've confirmed this, if you take the screws out, through the sticker. They actually don't void the warranty, which is pretty nice. Uh, it is a tamper seal to figure out if they need to check the thermal paste or anything like that on an R RMA. So anyway, we've got four screws and then uh, we can reveal the die for the first time once we get in here because we haven't seen the 1660 DI. DI. We haven't seen the 1660 TI die yet. Uh, that was harder to say than it should have been. So this should be pretty easy. Yep, all right. Well, there's not much content here today. <laughs> the, uh, the cooler comes out with four screws. It's actually pretty interesting. And I will note we're working on the GN Media Mod Mat, which you can grab on store.gamersnexus.net. If you like this work surface that I'm on, we do have them there. You can get them on reserve because we sold through the first round already. But here's the card. So um, de definitely a different style cutout for EVGA and the base plate. That's kind of new for them. Let's just go ahead and instantly reveal that die. That's what I'm most interested in. This paste is feels like uh, Shinetsu or something paste, pretty standard stuff. You can see they definitely covered their bases though. Like that's, that looks like uh, actually, maybe not. I was gonna say that looks like it's done by a silk screen because uh, Ace Attack uses silk screens for their paste, but I actually can't tell. Okay, there's the die, pretty small, even compared to a 20, or a, yeah, 2060. TU116-400A1. So the 1060 was a uh, GP106, I think, dash 400A1 as well. So it follows the same naming scheme, except it's 116 and it's Turing. So I think that's 268 millimeters squared. Uh, like I said, we have an official chart with information. We can maybe put that on the screen or something if, if we need to, but. That's the die, very basic stuff. For the rest, we have a base plate. It's an aluminum base plate. We have three heat pipes that look like they are 10 millimeter heat pipes. And they are the flat style heat pipes, which are nice because you can get more surface area contacting the fins. This is actually pretty standard practice these days, uh, but just in case you're not aware. Flat heat pipe allows them to get direct uh, well, more direct contact to the fin stack rather than a round heat pipe where you need more to go through more solder. And the rest is just soldered uh, to connect to everything. So that's most of the cooling solution on the bottom. There's a copper cold plate that's uh, an interesting shape just to fit the mounting holes, but that's because this card is so small that they've got some of the memory right here, and we'll reveal this in a second, approaching or encroaching on the GPU territory, hence having the cutout over here. I would be interested to see if they had, I mean, it's not really necessary, but it would have been interesting to see if the, the copper here extended to cover those 
VRAM modules as well, but it's honestly just completely unnecessary. So uh, the VRAM will be cooled well enough by the aluminum plate and the fan. And then the rest, we have some thermal pads. Actually, let's just take this base plate off and look at the rest. So there's a just nut and screw combo on each side of these for the uh, IO, the expansion plate. We can track those on our now dual-sided silo GPU silhouette mod mat. And these hold in the base plate. Okay, then uh, <laughs> uh, two screws here that look like they do nothing right there, except actually they do hold this inner plate in, which goes on top of some of the video outs, and then that connects to the base plate as well via screws. So we're just going to unscrew it from the outputs right here. Get these last two screws. There we go. That connect it to the uh, lower plate. So here's our card. We have memory modules. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those. It's six gigabytes. I like the uh, indents there. Interesting. Just holes in the base plate. Curious about those, but uh, yeah. So some indentations there from the base plate, but let's see what kind of memory it is. I previously called this tool a spudger, but I've been informed that it is in fact a jimmy. It's, a, it's an easy mistake, anyone could make it. This is actually a jimmy, not a spudger. My apologies to Jimmy's family. Uh, so memory, it looks like it is micron. That's micron, okay. Micron memory, 12 gigabits per second. Overclocks to about 14 in our testing at least. That's covering a shunt resistor. So you've got a shunt resistor right there. That would be that thing. 5 milliohm. And uh, you could short the shunt resistors, one of them, if you wanted to boost the power target, I suppose. There's another on the back. I guess we can check which one corresponds to the pins versus the PCIe slot. But before Doing that check, there's the inductors. So we have a two-phase memory VRM and then a four-phase for the GPU VRM. The MOSFETs are on semi NCP302155. Power components on the back, we have another on semi45491. And we have an uh, on semi NCP. 81276 on the top. Okay, so now this is not too particularly relevant for most use cases of this card, but we're going to check the shunt resistors and see which one corresponds to the PCIe cable. So if for some reason you wanted to lift the power targets on this card, I guess you could probably get it pretty close to like overclocked. Well, you get to like 1070 Ti performance for sure, I think. Well, maybe not, but you get it. You get it pretty close to stock 1070 Ti performance, I think, without a power target. But let's just check which ones go to, go to what. So for this test, it's pretty easy. We're just going to check a 12-volt uh, a pin on PCIe versus the shunt resistor lag resistance. We're checking for continuity. And these are, this is a, we've got on the mat here. So let's do a few things. You can see on the mat, so again, our new media mod mat, we have some shunt resistor examples here, these small things, number 12. And if you check the leg of number 12 versus the uh, yellow, the 12 volt line on the power connector, you can then uh, figure out which one corresponds to that versus to the PCIe slot in the bottom. So 12 volts gonna be on the bottom. And then what we're looking for on the uh, DMM there, we're looking for a zero, not OL, but zero. 0 0.2 is pretty close to zero. So that that's uh, continuous. So that shunt resistor corresponds to that PCIe header if you did want to short the shunts for some reason.
So that's really it on the card. It's, it's very simple. It's a small card. There's not a whole lot going on. The die is there. So if you haven't seen that before, you can see it now. It does not have the retention bracket around the outside of the, uh, the substrate as we see on some cards, but the 2080 and down, I think, dropped that retention um, like metal housing that's on it normally. And that's fine, it's not that big. And then the cooler just has three 10 millimeter heat pipes. They go right through the only spot that matters, which is where the die is. There's pretty direct contact there. Big copper cold plate, some fins. You have some L-shaped fins over here, like the 45 degree angle L-shapes. That's right there. Uh, mostly for airflow purposes, air passage. Sometimes this can be used for increasing surface area to thermal pads. If there's a thermal pad under it, you get a bit more surface area while still allowing airflow to go through. So that's a typical reason to use those. And then the straight 90 is for the rest. And I think that really covers the card. It's, it's very simple. And I, I don't know that this even has LEDs. I don't think this even has LEDs. I don't know. I don't look at the cards when we're benching them because we don't really care about LEDs, but I don't think it has them. So that's the EVGA 1660 Ti XC. And uh, we have a review on the channel already for performance. You can check that. Subscribe to the channel for more. Of course, we're going to try and work with this one as well uh, as we find time for all these cards. So this is probably on our list for thermal testing and stuff like that. So uh, that's 1660 Ti. Let us know what you think performance-wise or the build, and I don't know what else to say. Um, really memorizing the name has, has consumed all of my mental capabilities. So we'll end it there. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of the media mod mats. They're on back order now because they were too popular and you bought them all. Thank you. But they're on back order so you can get a reserve. And uh, patreon.com slash gamersnexus otherwise. I'll see you all next time.